Yep, just forgot, I'm doing it now. So, on this, the question is about if I have basketball salary data. And I need to figure out if I need to do a critical Z score, critical T score, or neither. Um, so a critical Z score is if I just have your distribution, I don't have a sample size, and I'm assuming a normal distribution. A critical T score is I have your salary information, I have your sample size, and then I can calculate it from there. So on this one, I have a 0.9 confidence interval. I have it for both. So this one uses norm.s.m. The critical T uses, I have to find the sample size, which was given in the problem. Then I have to figure out your degrees of freedom, which is one minus, and then the critical T. So the critical T is your T value, uh, or sorry, your, degree, your critical value, degrees of freedom, and it would basically it calculates for you. So in this case, does it do the right one? For some reason, I am getting different values over here. Oh, right here. I'm still getting different ones. Why am I getting different ones? Huh. Oh, okay. So, when you do these, in order to get the right confidence interval, you have to remember that you have a normal distribution. So when you do a normal distribution, let me go ahead and get one of these guys back out. You will have, I said over here, um, this is what, it's, mm, doing it backwards. I don't know. So you'll have a normal distribution like this is what they're going to assume. So a 95% confidence interval would mean that you take that and divide it in half so you have 2.5 on both sides. I have really bad handwriting. So that would mean instead of 0.95 I'd take point Nine, uh, let's see. So I take the point zero five and divide it by two plus point nine five. So what you do, you take your alpha divided by two, which is one minus your confidence interval, and then add it to your confidence interval to get this point right here. So what I could do, point nine five is plus g2 divided by There you go, fixed it. So now, if you put it in this, the correct value in here, it will correct, calculate the prep, correct value for you. Kind of pseudo help? Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah, this was not a very fun-ish one. And that's more the same thing. Oh, 
Oh, so the reason you do this versus this. So if you have a mean, you do critical Z. No mean. Critical T. Biggest difference between the two. Don't do that. Do this. So, next thing would be so this would be rename this real quick to be your critical T and Z scores. This will be. Um, Confidence interval of pop mean. Give it, see if they actually have it on here. So for this, you have to do a couple of things. So this is, um, if we do not know uh, your mean, your pop mean, or your mean. Oh, pop standard deviation. So you have to find your error. So to do so, you need your critical T-score. Divided by two, you need to have an S and a sample size. You also need to have population mean, sample mean, We have a sample mean. Oh, no, we don't need that. You use the population mean or standard or sample mean. Doesn't matter which one. And that's pretty much what you need to figure out. So your error here, so the formula. So here's the numbers. I'm going to go ahead and put the formula here. So the error is equal to uh, the critical uh, t divided by 2 times s divided by square root of your df. So this would be equal to that times, open parentheses, this divided by square root of that minus one. One, two, three. And yes, it gives us an error. So I have an example problem of uh, somebody gave us 110 body temps. So let's say you're doing something with these ridiculous temperature checks that some schools have been doing. So we have 110 temperature checks. So put that down here. And a healthy adult human should have a 98.6, we think, with a standard deviation of, let's say, 
eight degrees, which puts everyone pretty decent far. And we want to find a uh, confidence interval of 95%. So we have to form an upper and lower confidence interval. So this, once again, would be, since we're doing a T, uh, well, not norm, but it's T dot M, and we have probability. So once again, we can do that plus one minus, I uh, need to do another one, one minus that divided by two, because I want to make sure it's that two-tailed, so 0.975 without having to actually do it. And I degrees of freedom is equal to my n minus one. Critical t-score. And you can see my error ended up being calculated. So on this, I would need to put in this guy, this guy, and this guy. And from it are, we can figure out the lower and upper confidence interval. To do this, we would take pop sample mean plus error or pop sample mean minus error. So we take this plus this, and that's our upper bounds, and this minus this, and that'd be our lower bounds. And what that means is we are 95% confident that the true mean of our, this is probably a sample, would be, this is a sample, you have 110 people, is between 98.75 and 98.45 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? Does having the formula over here kind of help instead of going through the book? Yeah. They, I, uh, uh, they don't, they kind of hide it. I can do it because I've done enough of them, but they're kind of weird to find. Yeah, kind of confusing. But I mean, I've seen them before, and they use stuff like error, but I'm just used to seeing the formula. Yeah. So, I mm, think this is the same thing. And they they try and give you the standard DV or um, normal distribution, but you have computers. Use computers. Uh, so, what? So this is if you just get numbers. So if I have everything, works great. But life is not always like that. So this will be confidence intervals given data. I can essentially just do this three times, like three of these a day and go through most of your homework anyway. So I am given data. I'm sure it's randomized. So this is rich people's money. So net worth of rich people. That's in millions of dollars. Yeah. So I need to do of the wealth. So just like I did over here, I need to find all this right here. But this time, I had to let a computer do it for me. So I need to find, let's say, 
Uh, I want to be very set, certain, so I want to find 99%. So let's see if I copy this, we'll do the same thing. Don't work harder, work smarter. Always try this and see if it works. Nope, it did not. Oh, it does. So this, so I just copied it and pasted it. If you keep your reference cells the same when you copy and paste, it should work. So I can calculate my N without having to count by just doing count and then highlighting everything that I'm counting and it will count it for me. Hey, look, I have a critical T value divided by two. I can calculate this by using the mean, by using average, and then doing the same thing. So that is my average. And I'll make sure that I'm doing the center deviation. Yeah. This is standard deviation. So I could do st.eev, stdve, and I technically want to do a sample and do the same thing. And I'm getting a standard deviation. So then, because I've done the same thing, I should just be able to copy this cell over here and then these two cells over here and it will do everything for me. That's me knowing way too much Excel. But here you change that. You change the numbers. The only thing you'll have to change on this is if you have a different number of entries, you would have to change, I should probably do that. Um, 10 entries, you will to change the ranges. So down here, for S, for N, for these, these all depend on A2 to A11. If you have a different number other than those 10 numbers, you're going to have to change the range to that end of that number, either more or less, and it will change all those values. But right now, it's set to those 10 values. And that's just changing literally three numbers, and it will calculate everything else for you. Yes, this is pretty much what I did for the, my classes. When I took this, it was make a crazy long spreadsheet like this. People thought I was weird. And then asked for the spreadsheets. <clears throat> so, when you do this, uh, If these are not a random sampling of celebrities, but rather the 10 wealthiest or 10 least wealthiest, it's not a good sampling of rich people. It has to be random. I mean, if I take Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, and I um, can't remember his name, Bill Gates, that's gonna be kind of skewed. So, I mean, it has to be a random sample to be a good sample. Oh, to see if this is normally distributed, the easiest way to do that is I'm going to highlight all these. And I'm going to insert a the scatter plot with a line. So looking at this, actually, does this look like a normal distribution? Uh, 
actually has a terrible graph. I need to do wrong chart, wrong chart. Uh, here's my statistical. There it is. Combo chart now. Somewhere in here is statistical. I'm having to find it. Histogram. I can change the bars. They get smaller too. So if you look at a histogram, and I can change the bars, which I'm going to do because this is a terrible bar. Uh, format access. Bin width. Let's do the bin width to about 10. There we go. And no, 10 knows better. Let's do 12. So all I did, by the way, if you ever do this, is I right click, format, access, and you can change this bin width to be whatever you want and it will reformat to basically changing how many people, how many millions of dollars essentially are in each one. Uh, it's a way, and, and when you play around with charts, it's a good way to get a better view of what's going on. So looking at this, if I can actually get it to zoom correctly. Really. This is supposed to look like a normal distribution, which would be like this. If it doesn't look like this, and I have 10 people, this is not a normal distribution. So this, is not a good representative sample and should never have been done. So that's kind of how that actually works in reality. That's actually something called a Poisson distribution and it is pain. Uh, do, 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 do. That's the same thing. So in these, we're going to actually have more interpretation of data uh, in this. Uh, so two options, you can either you know, keep on doing it till you get the right answer, especially if you have this that does the machines, or just take a second and think about the question. Um, generally, you'll get more out of stats pass if you can do stuff like, if I'm, if I'm going to survey all the state colleges or all the major universities in Arizona, does that tell me, is that a good sample? That would depend on what I'm looking for. If, I want, if I'm asking what it's like to go to school in the desert, it's a great question because all but one of them really are in a desert, right? If I'm asking, you know, about topics that affect the nation, that would be a very bad one because I'm only targeting one school. So the question they're asking can determine whether or not it's a good survey or a bad survey. And it's to the point that that's literally the first question I ask everybody I do tutoring for because most of them are grad students and they're like, it helps set the background for what they're doing and saves them a lot of time, uh, especially if they're at the beginning of grad school. If they're not, it's like, okay, you just got to write about it. Have fun. Uh, we got 43. We could do one more. So this one is sample size. Um, um, I mean, I'm 
Okay, let me pull this up in here. There's just, once again, this is a formula. I just have to figure out the formulas, you know, all that nonsense. Sample size. So here we go. So we had to do sample size. So we need Z alpha divided by two. We need standard deviation. We need error. Uh, do, 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 do. 20. Wait, we have a mean. So we have to find all these in here, and we want to find, so we have to know uh, confidence interval to find this. So this would be norm.s.m of your confidence interval. So we want to find it within, let's say, five points. Our confidence interval as we're going to find a 95% or yeah, 95%. Uh, plus one minus D five. There we go. And let's say our standard deviation for this is 15. So those are our base factors. To find the n, so values, and you had to put in these guys. Your n is going to be Z, oh, where are you at? Z score, uh, alpha by two, times standard deviation, divided by error, and all that's going to be squared. So, This times this divided by this squared. So on this, you cannot have partial people. Can I do uh, round up? So you could use round up. And, uh, to get the number rounded up because you can never get a partial number. I mean, you can't have a 0.4 of a subject. So it always has to be rounded up.
Um, what up, AC? Did they do one where you don't know? So they do give you on this. So they can get, they can do stuff where they have, you don't know standard deviation, but they give you range. So that would be, uh, they give you it here, but um, to find range, find range. The range divided by four. So if I'm looking at, like for instance, this one, and I had, um, so like say this was looking at GPA. What's your four GPAs you could have? Zero, one, two, three, and four, right? So you can have a range of four. So if I take my range divided by four, oh, it gives me the first of January. Stop doing that. So you can, using without actually knowing the standard deviation, estimate it. Okay. Um, that got us to with all these. Everyone's brain fried. Probably got you a little bit ahead too. Yeah. Anybody online have anything they would like to talk about real quick? Uh, if you got nothing, uh, as everyone on the internet may have seen me scratching my ear. Oh wait, no, I'm still scratching screen. Um, uh, yep, so if we're brain fried, we'll go ahead and uh, cut out for today. Um, we'll probably finish up most of this Wednesday unless people have more questions about project and then the, the rest of this will get pushed to Friday. So it's looking like we'll be able to go over every kind of question on the on your homework before then though. Okay. Everyone now the feed is in as we are done. Let me stop this recording. Yeah. Oh, stop.